thank you, Dr. Namrata. And uh, we all know that uh, the fecic implants have been uh, used extensively for the correction of astigmatic active error. And, uh, Currently, the posterior chamber sulcus implants are the ones that we use. Uh, the implantable columnar lens is the one that is used extensively all over the world. And uh, in India, we have some hydrophilic acrylic implants like RIL, Apasami, RPCL, Icryl. So these lenses are also used very often. The ICL, the columnar lens, uh, has an optic diameter of 4.9 to 5.8 millimeters, uh, the EVO model. And currently, they have the EVO Plus model as well, which has an expanded optic up to 6.1 millimeter. And this is designed for larger pupil size. And then it has a central aqua port, 360 microns. The ICL is basically made to correct the patient's cylinder. And uh, in, in this, the lens is always inserted horizontally, uh, but the axis on the cylinder is incorporated in the lens. However, there is an additional rotation that is required to align the axis to have a good uh, uh, final visual outcome. And the lenses that are available and the hydrophilic acrylic implants are, uh, say for example, the refractive implantable lens has four holes here in the in the peripheral in, in the in the at the edge of the optic, and it is it has the cylinder incorporated with the required axis. So. It is placed along zero and 180 degrees, and it doesn't require any additional rotation. The indications are uh, primary astigmatism along the spherical refractive error and stable keratoconus. In keratoconus, if the there is definite evidence of uh, stability, the patient is more than 30 years of age, then we can definitely go ahead and put an uh, ICL. Uh, at lesser age, if you don't have a definite evidence of stabilization, then definitely we can use uh, cross-linking, we can uh, use intraconal ring segment and cross-linking together and subsequently uh, by reducing the astigmatism by ring segment and by making the corneal surface more uh, regular, we can put the toric uh, ICL for visual outcome. But most importantly, in all these keratoconus cases, there shouldn't be any corneal scar in order to have a good outcome. The uh, reference marking is done in sitting and standing position as we do in any toric uh, IOL as well and the axis marking is done on the table. This is what we do manually. And then once we plant the toric ICL uh, uh, in the eye, uh, the haptics, the foot plates are tucked behind the iris. It is rotated along the axis in order to provide uh, accurate positioning. Now, I'd like to emphasize, uh, we all have been doing uh, this procedure very often. What I would like to emphasize here is that uh, after Placing the phacic implant in its uh, proper position, uh, we should do a thorough uh, removal of viscoelastic. Uh, this is uh, how it is done. This is a cartridge, and we have to ensure that the uh, that the uh, 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 the uh, foot plate, uh, which is uh, uh, the proximal one, should have a hole on the right side. And after tucking the haptics, the foot plates, we rotate the uh, this uh, ICL bring it into its uh, position uh, with the viscoelastic cushion over the crystalline lens so that it doesn't damage the zonules and the lens capsule. And then what is most important is that we should definitely remove the viscoelastic as far as possible. So, uh, and with the central aqua port, we can remove the viscoelastic from underneath the vault as well so that there is no chance of rotation in the post-operative period. And once you have done that, the rotational stability of these lenses is quite good. Studies have shown that these V4C toric ICLs is uh, predictable, safe, and effective with good post-operative rotational stability. Uh, these lenses can also be implanted apart from the manual marking. We can do markless uh, by digital imaging modalities, and we can place the lens in its position. In this case, eight degrees rotation was required. So as you can see here, the uh, the digital marking has shown that the ICL is well aligned along the axis. There are various studies, multiple studies that have shown that toric implants are, have been quite effective. This is the FDA trial. Then there are a couple of studies which have compared other modalities with uh, phacic implants. Like this is one of the studies wherein the ICL was compared with wavefront guided LASIK for uh, in cases of high myopic astigmatism. And they found out that the toric ICL has superiority over the wavefront guided elastic 
in eyes with high myopic astigmatism in terms of safety, efficacy, predictability, and stability. In cases of keratoconus, we have been discussing so far that you know, intraconal ring segment and cross-linking are very useful. And there are a couple of studies wherein they have uh, combined intraconal ring segment and CXL together, followed by toric ICL. In this study and a few more studies, uh, intraconal ring segment was done first, then it was followed by CXL four weeks later, and then six months later, toric ICL was implanted, and they found out that the results were good. So in conclusion, I would like to say that toric phacic implants are effective in providing good quantity and quality of vision in eyes with astigmatism, either primary astigmatism or due to irregular cornea, as seen in keratoconus. It can also be combined with other procedures like uh, cross-linking, like intraconal ring segment, and it has also been used as a piggyback lens uh, uh, when there is a residual astigmatism following cataract surgery and eyelid implantation. And uh, studies have shown that uh, once it is there in its position and its axis, it provides a good long-term stability of the eye well. Thank you very much. I would like to invite Dr. Namrata Sharma for her talk on uh, astigmatism and keratoplasty. <laughs> 